Well, good morning. Well, um, good midnight to all of you wrestling fans and the Godfather soldiers who are swimming. It's Tuesday, June the 18th, 2024. And Raw looked like a pretty good show. Pretty good show last night. I enjoyed it. The name of my talk was called Chaos and Creepy. And Creepy and, uh, Chaos and Creepy and Corpus Christi, yeah, Corpus Christi. Yeah, and uh yeah. and um um really good show. And um I'm the Godfather Soldiers who swimming. The late child chain handshake test like the drag wrist of a chubby chubby checker dance the same like number final Richie dance like James Ryan. And I like to get in that hot tub, feel me sweat, feel me drag, feel me wet. From one of those friends who was on Facebook, who was in wrestling, who I am, he man, he's in heaven, I miss him very much. One of the nicest people I ever met. Before I start my little review, to, uh, um, live video tonight, it's midnight, I'm going to open up the show with a little something, the number one hit single from 1974 called Theme from Soul Train and Sound of Philadelphia. So stick around. And we get everything rolling. One second. Oh, sir. Soul Train thing. 1974, here it goes. Stick around right back. Man, it was a really good show last night. Really enjoyed it. That time someone had always had a song, someone had to stand up to Chad Gable last night. They had enough. Hey, after the cab stand up to Chad Gable, how much we're we gonna take? How much are I say? So much.
what you guys say. Show train never won't hear a single from 1974. Sound of Philadelphia. Maybe a brother with love. See, um, see, um, show open up the then now for everything. The WWE video, the mysterious QR code code appears. QR um code images flashing throughout plays. Listen to the show. Fierce, Drew McIntyre is walking backstage. Fierce, Drew McIntyre is shown walking backstage. McIntyre came up to show his World Heavyweight title. Heavyweight championship match against Damian Priest thanks to CM Punk. And bam, what happened? A little music hit. And wow, I'm shocked at shock. Seth Rollins return. Wow. Cleared after his injury after WrestleMania 40. Let me guess. Rollins. We have Rollins confronted. We're going to come out here. And then. Then, uh. We saw, uh. We saw, we saw, um. Then, uh, out comes Damian Priest. Judgment Day coming out. Judgment Day so fast. And, uh, after his little injury, and he said, I guess, let me guess, he wants, um, I guess he wants the World Heavyweight title back from, uh, he wants the World Heavyweight title back from Drew Damian Priest. Judgment Day so fast. And, um, so it talks about money in the bank. Yeah, he wants his belt back. Rollins wants his belt back. And he is gonna have so he's gonna have to go to uh, money in the bank to get get his belt back. 
priest came out and said, um, talking some smack. And my, um, it's time to burn it down. Now, WrestleView.com says the priest is a pretty decent surprise to have Seth Freaking Rollins open the show. The crowd was definitely hot for him. It's going to be Rollins versus Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight title and Money in the Bank. Should be a good one. Then, little triple threat qualifying match. Main event, Jay Uso, Rey Mysterio, and Finn Balor competing in the spot in the Money in the Bank. The women also have a Money in the Bank qualifying match with the Yellow Sky, Keanu James, and Lee Vega. Then we see a little Rod General Manager's office. Earlier today, Chad Gable came into the General Manager's Came into the Rod General Manager and pitched out to Otis, Maxine Free, and Kira Tazawa. Kira Tazawa. Gable says if it wasn't for his number one disappointed in the others, he'd, he'd have the Intercontinental Champion title. Gable wants another shot. Free says Gable has, has had opportunity after opportunity, and the best thing for him is to go back out of the line and, and win his way back to the title. Gable's not happy about that. He's the leader and belongs in front of the line. Gable tells Chris to find him some work, some find him some worthy. Someone worthy. Chris says he has the perfect poem for him. Gable tells us Chris to line up and make it official. Chris looks pleased to make this official. And let's see who his opponent is. His opponent is Braun Strowman. The bell rings. Braun Strowman flexes the gable, butting down. And Strowman rolls it off with a bit, rolls it off, boots him down. Strowman shouts at Af at Alpha Camera that Gable is a bully, and he's yeah, he's right. Someone needs to stand up to him. That's what Strong says. He said, Gable is a bully. I know some of you say that um, Strowman shouldn't be talking. Because he'd be um, doing the same thing with a lot of people. Big difference. Of, uh, well, he's changed now. Gable, um, Strowman knocks Gable down. He gets him up in the corner and smash, push, smash his chest. Chop, shown with some fire for a strong person to the corner. Gable gets for, for, breath, for breath and pulls himself up. Strong puts him up on the top rope and grabs him by the throat. We're yelling that he, we're yelling that he hates bullies. Gable grabs the arm and hangs over the top rope, find the arm bar. They release this before being disqualified. Gable shouts to Yaku Kami, that's how it's done, you morons. Gable sits up and Strong locks him off. Top rope and down on the floor with the right hand to the face. We go with a little commercial break. Then, we, and um, in a couple of ma match um, get um, Strowman power annihilates him, slams Gable to win. He power slams to win. The winner is Braun Strowman. And Gable's not too happy. Gable gets up in the center of the ring and here to after Cammy. Gable demands freedom to get in the ring. Chaz can't you suck at Gable. Maximum free moves on the crutches is helping to the ring. Gable takes the crutch. And throws it, crutch from her, and throws it out of the ring. Gable forces her to hobble out of the ring. Gable turns the dial around and shoves him, shoves him before slapping him down the face, knocking him down. Yeah. Oles turns and looks at Tazawa down on the mat before sneering at Master Gable. The crowd is buzzing. Oles then wipes out Gable with a shoulder tackle. Oles rips his t-shirt off, and Gable retreats to the corner, begging his star to keep people off. Otis is fired up, but he doesn't attack Gable any further. The crowd chants Otis. Otis leaves the ring and helps his dial max him back. The dial looks like he has flipped, flipped from a slap. Otis and Maxine 
So y'all look emotional as they walk off. Gable, I walk off and Gable. Gable gets up and throws a big fit in the ring. Yeah, good, good job, but guys, good job, Otis. To John Dupree, good job. I mean, who could blame? Who could blame them? Who could blame Otis, Dupree, and Akira? I mean, they had enough. They had enough. I mean, how much are they going to take? Take this kind of abuse from that from this jackass, um, Chad Gable. They did the right thing. See, I was oh, it's a snap. Listen. Wow. Uh, yeah, slap someone in the face. Slap somebody. This group was sick. By the time someone to stand up to him tonight, last night, somebody was stand up to him. He slapped him. They slapped him over. Kick his ass. Stand up to him. Yeah. Somebody yeah, some, that time, yeah, someone had to stand up to him tonight. You're not, yeah, you're not worth it. Yeah, some, that time someone had to stand up to him last night. He's not worth it. You're not worth it at all, David. You are not worth it. Yeah, how much are we going to take? How much are they going to take from you, Chad Gable? They had enough. They really had enough. Yeah, how much are we gonna take? That kind of abuse from him. And um, Russell.com, he said, I'm not sure that's a full, a full break with Otis and Russ from Chad Gable. They had, they had, they had, had to give the crowd something after weeks of dragging that out. They gave, they gave him a taste, little taste, little taste, can taste, and can drag this out even more, uh, drag this out even more, even more if they want to. Drag this out even more if they want. They want have always reconsidered. Yada yada. Yep, they finally stand up to that that punk. About time. You know something. Got what you deserve last night, Gable. Yeah, exactly what we deserve. Okay, um, Replays from last week from Rock. Hank at these telestrator. Replays from last week's show. Last week's Raw showed a controversy around the, the, the room key. The, the Raw Women's Champion Liv Morgan gave you dirty dumb dumb. Morgan will be it, not on um, Mysterio later on the show. And Mysterio looked conflicting. Then Barry would have picked keep on himself. Yeah, and uh, 
Lynn Morgan called um Dumb Dumb Daddy. It's like mysterious it's like um Dum Dum called um Rhea who I don't care. Mommy. Yeah, and um Finn Bell wants to know and Dan Priest wants to know what's going on between him and uh Lou Morgan. They don't like it. He's really with, he's with um, Rhea Ripley. Now it's time for the next match. Now we're not happy about uh, this qualifying match. Triple threat for the wimp for the triple threat match. Eo Sky versus Jonathan versus Lena Vega. Okay, uh, ding ding ding, the bell rings, Eo Sky quickly attacks Bling Vega. Yana James pulls off Sky. And look who comes in and interferes Liv Morgan. And um, Vega's not happy. And then Dirty, in, and he's in, she was wearing. Cow, um, Dum Dum's cow, her cow vest. James knocks Vega off the apron with a cold breaker and hits Sky. Hit, Sky hits James with a running double knee. Sky heads to the top rope and hit and hits went over the moonsault on James for win. Winners Eo Sky. Wow. And and Eos and um Vega says, oh boo hoo hoo. Oh poor Vega, she didn't win. No, they're really kind of, I mean, they really, I think Vegas should have won this match when, I mean, I don't know why, why, I mean, I mean, first, I mean, why in the world are they going to show me Sky in our throats? I mean, first, she, she, she was, um, she, she, I mean, she, she lost the title to Bailey at WrestleMania 40, her SmackDown was title on SmackDown, and now she's, you know, she's on Raw, and now she wants to be Raw Women's Champion. Vegas should have won this match. If it wasn't, if you know, if it hadn't been, been for um, yeah, Liv Morgan screwed Selena Vega. That's nothing compared. It's not. It was not. It was nothing compared. Um, it was not um the same thing as um, CM Punk throwing Drew McIntyre last Saturday at. Clash the castle. This is a decent uh, money bank qualifying triple threat from WrestleMania.com. Eo Sky came out on top as she should have. Keon Drains didn't look fantastic that she's a little more slow motion, needs some more, some more grips of ring, getting used to being outside of the porn center. I think W. I think they're kind of screwing over um, Lena Vega. I think Triple H is kind of biased against Lena Vega. I think he doesn't want a Hispanic American women's champion, women's wrestler, to get close to a 
women's title. In my opinion. Okay, Braun break. We saw that they showed a recap of the uh, recap of what Braun Breaker has done to Eli Dragon. Okay, Sami Zayn addresses what's next for the Intercontinental Title. He says that Sami Zayn's comedy show is coming in July. Wow. And he's really happy. I bet you he's really happy that everyone is signed up to Chad Gable. Oh no, Braun Breaker. It looks like he wants Zayn's Intercontinental title, does he? Looks like it. Sheamus wants it too. Guess you're gonna get this. Um, then um, Zane says they need. Um, Zane said he's gonna try and make a match. Sheamus versus Braun Breaker in the winner, and maybe um, maybe perhaps maybe I mean who know, um, he said he's in. He's I've heard it, um, you know. This is what I think. I think Adam Pearce should make it a triple threat for the Intercontinental title. Maybe, uh, yeah, um, Sheamus versus Brown Breaker versus Sami Zayn at Money in the Bank. Maybe probably at SummerSlam. Who knows? Now it's time for the next match. Dragon Lee versus, uh, well, we see, we see a little, we see our little interview by Al Fryer and Al Dandel Millen. Then, yeah, now it's time for the end of the match. Dragon Lee versus Carlito. Bell rings and Dragon Lee hopes on Carlito. He really wants, he really wants revenge on Carlito, does he? Oh wow! Now see Carl. Liv Morgan comes out of the ringside wearing Dairy Dumbbell's vest. She's about to approach the Dumb Dumbbell's lean back text from the ground. Yeah, lean back to come out wanting revenge for costing her. The qualifying match. She's really pissing. I, you know, I know some of you, some of you, um, say say this. Lena Vega's on fault. That she screwed. Say that she screwed herself. Saying if she would have paid attention, 
She wouldn't ever pay attention and match her hand. She wouldn't ever got disqualified. It's her fault. It's her own fault. I disagree. I like I, I like what, what I, I, I I still like a little more what she did to Rhea Ripley. I don't care about Rhea Ripley. Yeah, it's a little bigger text from behind pressure and briefing is done. Why, why, will the pull, pull some, will, will try to break them apart, break, pull some apart. Gundam knocks his father back. Damn you, Gundam, that's your own flesh and blood. Gundam says, will them, um, to bring himself to Ray Texas and someone with his right hand. J.D. was going to sweep the field to you in the second rope. Carly will get his lead with his back to go the rope. Win. It's Carlito. What a terrible, terrible son, son he is. Feel sorry for Ray. Now we see a little pissed off Drew McIntyre coming out here. Drew McIntyre coming out um, furious. And Chad Gable, um, and furious Chad Gable comes up with all the securities out and Mexican. Gable wants to demand why, why put those put his hands on him. Always packs his bag as soon as they're done with that baby. Yep, that's the same thing I said. They all walk off on Gable. Gable shouts that there'll be nothing without him. Gable says he'll do what Otis cannot do. The win money in the bank and cash in and become world champion. Okay, um, let's see. See, um, Drew McIntyre comes out here talking smack and stuff about, uh, some garbage and all that stuff about, uh, CM Punk and stuff costing him a title. He says, screw this company, I quit. And I was shocked why he's, he's quitting. I mean, he says, he's, uh, he's trying, Adam Pierce is trying to stop him the series, I mean. So, so what I mean, so what about, what about real, I mean, I said to myself, really, really, um, Drew McIntyre, what about your match with CM Punk at SummerSlam? Well, he brought up, Drew McIntyre can't be pissed, he brought it on himself, he could never put the referee on him. He screwed himself. I don't know why, why the fans of Scotland were pissed. I don't think he's really gonna quit. Maybe the, um, well, Recipe.com says another wrinkle in the story while also letting him drag the storyline out a little more, a little more until CM Punk is clear to compete. Drew McIntyre has quit WWE. I guess he'll continue having his injuries, which will probably aren't fully healed. To come back to the Punk. Probably never, maybe, maybe not. And uh see um little tag team match um Dakota Kai from Damage Control and Kyrie Zane versus Kaden Kaden Carter and Katana Chance. And um 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 two of them facing off and then um uh, wow and um the winners are Kaden Carter and Katana Chance. Little and, and Lyra and Lyra Becker interferes, run down, and check on Chance, and it distracts Kokai and Carter hits the thing with a DT and grabs Carter. The car kicks from the face. Chance tags in and he hits Kai after a heart party for a win. 
too uh, quick with tag match even to remotely care about it. Ron Breaker is preparing to smash next against Sheamus, which is next. And um and Dakota Kai is complaining about Lyra Vacker getting involved in the match of boo hoo hoo whatever. Yo Sky is discussing she's just turning up damage control needs to change or don't. Sky will change things herself. Sky walks up and Kai and then look worried. Kai is damage control prep. Okay, Sean Shamus and Von Breaker. All of them butting heads face to face, beating up each other. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, uh, say, okay. Um, Okay, they're butting each other, beating up each other. Brown Becker, Shanks, Closeman, and uh, wham, bam. Saw I saw Breaker dives off it, broken clothesline. Shanks over the announce table. A little commercial, with commercial break. Commercial break. Uh, um, break. And um. Sorry about that. Hold on, hold on, people. Hold on. Sorry about that, everybody. Sorry. A little music in the background. It's from the, um, it's from, from the little opening from a music movie called The Toy Star with the late Richard Pryor and Jackie Gleason. Um, and, um, Yeah, close line. Let's see you so fighting. Sami Zayn is watching from watching ringside. Near fall, busting in the win in the win by the DQ. Yeah, winning by the DQ is shameless. Breaking is very pissed off. And Kaiser <clears throat> destroys Shameless. Breaking spot up the um Yeah, and Breaker took, takes his anger out on, on. Oh, this is what happened. This is what happened. Yeah, Rick Steiner's son. Oh no, no, he's gonna break his leg. Oh no.
this man's out of control. Rick Steiner's son, man, wow. Scary moment. Yeah, WrestleMania.com says scary mode and otherwise good hitting hard hitting match with Brown Breaker and Sheamus when they slipped on the Frank at Frankensteiner. Great post match wilderness with Brown Breaker getting all the crowd right back. He's hell on he's on a hell of a uh, run right now. Yeah he is. Oh, second. One second, sorry. Oh, one second. See, um, hey, uh, well, backstage, hold on, sorry, sorry about that. Let's see. Now we'll see a little backstage segment with Dum Dum, uh, everything. And the priest is just walk is not happy about this. And I said, uh oh, uh oh. Priest. The priest says, um, the priest tells Morgan to stop messing with Spirit and um, he doesn't want nothing to do. And Dum Dum wants nothing to do with her. Yeah, um, Liv Morgan's doing this to get back at Rhea Ripley. I don't blame her. She said, oh boy, she's local. I mean, crazy. Well, you gotta love crazy people. You just gotta. You gotta love crazy girls like Liv Morgan. WWE promoting WWE Speed on X. Karen Cross is backstage with Scarlett. Ross Richards, Xavier Woods, and Cole Kingston. Good evening. Two weeks ago, LP beat the living hell out of them last week. They gave Cross a tough case of his own medicine and all that stuff. New Day and, and, um, and CM Punk will appear on this Friday, which takes place in his hometown of Chicago. Next week, I'm about Chad Gable, Greg Marshall, and Big Bronson Reed and Bronson Reed competing in Money Bank Qualifying Triple Threat Match. Shane Bays with Kyrie Zane and Larry Becker also compete in the Money Bank Qualifying Triple Threat Match. Arena Concourse, Jay Uso is in the concourse with some fans. Uso, yee! Little ovation, now it's time for Triple Threat Match. Jay Uso versus Finn Bell versus Rey Mysterio. The bell rings. All of them are kicking ass and all that stuff. Bell is for peak. Um, Bell wants me to do some of the kit. Mysterio put this in. Bell returning the crowd. 
get this dirty paintings, this good ship, um, snap nose Brett's son, Ray Mysterio's son, Brett, come at Ray Mysterio's Brett's son, Dum Dum, comes out. Goes to the ringside, pulls his father's leg. Mysterio hits the son with a flying human son before they drag him down and attack her. Get him down and the trailer cut Mysterio's sandwich. He's supposed to have Ron Strong run down, chase down the judgment. Good thinking. And during battle, he um, rolls Uso up, but, but Uso super kicks him off for a two count. Uso charges for a spear. Valor kicks him in the face and goes to for Uso for the win. Winner is Jay Uso. First man to qualify the money in the bank. 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 And he's um, dancing. Jay Uso is dancing. And something else. Guess what happened? Guess what happened? All of you in the shock room for this. All of a sudden, the movies are cut off. The lights are going out of the arena. The flyer fires are up. Out. There's the door shown. Okay, on the entrance ramp. Hold on a second.
Hey, I'm back. Uh, look in my eye. Now, uh, let me tell you what was the greatest ending to the show last night. Very epic. All of a sudden, the music cuts off. Lights are out. Lights are trying to go out of the ring. Fireflies are out, and a door, and a door is shown on the entrance ramp. Reminiscent of when the late, great Ray Ryder returned at Extreme Rules in October 2022. The door bursts open, and the white light shines through the door. Going, we're going out. A few group crawls through the doorway, cuts through the smoke crawling, cuts through, cuts through, through the doorway, and um, um, a figure crawls through the doorway and cuts through the smoke crawling, crawling the character from the, the ring. The figure is a female and frightening mask. She stares at the lantern as I'm so lit, lit. She points back. Camera goes backstage. There's still smoke feeling, feeling, we're feeling the stage. People are going, are get down on the ground, unconscious. A figure, a figure, a large figure, bunny fright mask holds a cartoonish camera and says, "Help!" In a real position, sparks shoot the damaged equipment. The person is against the wall. Covered in blood from his head, smashed against it. Rostrum is unconscious on the floor as well. A dreadlock figure in a mask is shown calmly sitting on a desk amidst carnage. Continuing backstage, we see a figure in a gas mask. Chad Gable is unconscious, bleeding from his head. We finally see Uncle Howie standing there. Uncle Howie walks by the man in a gas mask. Uncle Howie makes his way to the arena, flanked by it. Character, a terrifying character. Uncle Howdy lifts up the lantern and poses with the people. Uncle Howdy growls, We are here. And the lantern blow, blows out. Wow, Uncle Howdy. I bet you that's Bray Wyatt and the woman, woman is, is probably Nikki Cross and, uh, Yes, Eric Rowan, Joe Bessie, Dexter Loomis. Yep, it's true. And um, yeah, and then uh, and get this from wrestling.com. It's sobering to think that Bray Wyatt is truly dying, and not being allowed to create this type of environment with Paul Levesque, Triple H at, at the helm. Why really, on, really only ever had Vince McMahon spoiling his work? I'm interested to see what Triple H does with this group. I mean, uh, even this group of wrestlers all need help in their way when they book under Vince Man. I think WWE will might uh, will evaluate their positives and book some really good shit. And I'm blown away by this last night. I mean, this was really shot last night. I mean, they man WWE man should do something not seen like this before. This is a very epic moment. This is a really good show last night and I loved it. Hope one of those uh one of the members become champion have champions in their belt. Uncle Harry. So that's name is so it's a stable now. So it's an Uncle Harry is a state um that's the new after the new wire family. Bo Dallas is Uncle Howdy. I'm trying to see what the other name the rest of their names are. Rest of names are. We'll see. So that was a really good show, and uh, I know what all of you um, know what it's time for. It's time for something that I like to do. Oh, 
time for Justin's timeline history. Of all the sports. All the sports. Uh, pop culture. Wrestling history and wrestling birthdays. Like all of you hear that theme is against the Back to the Future theme. All of you just heard. Let's get things underway. But, um, let's see, um, I know it was Bailey's birthday, birthday last Saturday. She was, uh, 35. And big win on her birthday last Saturday against, uh, Piper Nipnack, Clash of Castle. That uh, Bailey's birthday was she was thirty five last Saturday. Trying to feel where his birthday is going. It was Scott Norton's birthday yesterday. He was, uh, Scott Norton's birthday was, uh, wait, uh, set last Saturday, I mean, June the 16th. Sixty-six, and right, Brad Armstrong would have been Um, he would have been, six, he, uh, he would have been 63 last Saturday. And Chuck Palumbo was, was uh, Chuck Palumbo was, uh, he turned Fifty-three last Saturday.
and Jungle Jack Jackass Perry would have been you know Jack. Wait, wait, I mean, sorry, he was uh, sorry. I mean, Jack Perry turned son of Lionel to one of hot dog. Uh, late Luke Perry he was point seven last Saturday, and uh. Yeah, I think I did did the history for for the for the fifteenth just um Saturday. Okay, yeah, I did the sixteenth, sixteenth. Uh, okay, sixteenth. Um, I don't know about yeah, uh, Houston Rockets beat the Knicks. I know one eighty two they was June fifteenth, nineteen four game four of the NBA nineteen four NBA finals. Let's see June let's see. See, um, 100, 100 and, um, wait, the Pistons defeat the Lakers, 100, 187, game five of the NBA Finals, June 15th, that was June 15th, 2004, in game four, game five, and, uh, let's see. San Antonio Spurs, um, um, beat the Heat on uh, 104 87. My Heat lost 87. San Antonio Spurs won 104 game five NBA Finals. June 16th. Wow, Scott Hanson, Scott, yeah, Scott Hanson, you know, Scott Hanson, rest in peace, Scott Hanson, by the way. Canadian wrestler from Beyond Wrestling. He was uh, 39. Very tragic passing. Ultimate Warrior's birthday would have been last Saturday, Sunday. He would the late Ultimate Warrior. He would have been sixty-five.
and um, 1984, Cindy Lauper is a guest on Piper Pit, and um, she has a little few. She has a little. And it's the she has a little um, fight with Riley Piper, and, and um, she gets stabbed in the back by her um, by Captain Lou Albano, who did that little music video. Your girls just want to have fun. It was on WWF um, Championship Wrestling episode. And uh, Madison Square Garden, 1984, New York City. Uh, WWE um, hosted a show there, Madison Square Garden, formed by the World Wrestling Federation, now WWE. Don Barocco defeated Tony Gurria. George Ann was still to be a Jose Luis Rivera. Adrian Adonis and Dick, um, Dick Murdoch. Um, and often seek a fought in the draw, two out of three tag, two out of three partners for the WWF tag team titles. Jesse Dubai of Van Tour defeated Special Delivery Jones by submission. Greg DeHammer Valentine defeated Teal Santana by count. George D. Andre the Giant defeated David Soltz. Mad Dog Bashan defeated Evil Lombardi. Paul Orndorff defeated Salvatore Bellomo. Bob Orton Dream defeated Chief J. Strombo. Sardinus Slaughter defeated Iron Cheek in a boot camp match. Um, see what else? June 16. Um, NWA TNA weekly pay per view. BG James and Conan and Ron True Killing from R Truth via Chad Culver, Pasta Fernandez, and Ankh in a six person tag match. Trin defeated An B Angel, Pat Kane and Sunny Seattle defeated Glenn Gabriel and John Swinger in a humiliation tag box tag match. Raven defeated Sun J. Dutt in a Raven Rules match. AJ Styles defeated Dallas. Chris Harris and James Storm defeated Abyss of Mine Pat Bonnie Brown for the NWA Tag Team titles in a draw. Great. Chris Harris and James Storm and Abyss of Mine Brown fought in a draw. No count out for the NWA Tag Team titles. Bobby Roode and Eric Young and Peter Williams defeated Chris Saban and Eels and Jerry Lynn. Flag on, flag on three on three. They defeated. And defeated, defeated them. Um, Robert Roode, Eric Young, and P. Williams defeated Chris Samuelson, Ian Skipper, and Jerry Lynn. Flag on three. Flag three on three. Now, June 16, 2014, Roman Reigns spiked um, Triple H and Stephanie's um, coffee. And they both had a throw, and Stephanie Man had a puke on Vicky Guerrero. Funny raw moment right there. Let's see, June seventeenth. Now, Yesterday, June 17th. Yesterday was a happy 64th birthday. Clarence Mason, the manager in WWE, is a lawyer. And, um, Will Forte was 54 um, yesterday. He was a guest on Raw, as as a new Magruder impression. Character's new Magruder character, well, um, character, character of MacGyver. Then we uh, see um, 
in 1984 in Rosemont show, June 17, from my AWA at the Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois. Judy Martin and Fabulous Moon defeated Gary Lepreet and Susan Starr. Kurt Henning defeated Roger Kirby. Stan Lane and Steve Kern defeated Chris Markoff and Larry Zbysko. Nick Bong defeated Black Jack Lanza. Abdul the Butcher and King Kong Brody and Sean Sheik Anon Al Kisi. Defeated Baron, Baron Von Rosh, Dick Bruce, and Crusher, a person, six person tag, 12 3 falls match. And a couple of movies released in theaters is Pop Culture 1994. Uh, two movies released in theaters nationwide Getting Even with Dad, starring Ted Denson, Macaulay Culkin, and Wolf, starring Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson, and Michelle Pfeiffer, and James Brady was in that movie. Christopher Lake, Christopher Cone's in that movie, and, uh, what's her name, uh, Kate Nelligan was in that movie, yeah. And on this day in 2004, I mean, June 17, 2004, on uh, SmackDown, Rey Mysterio defeats Cruiser um, Chavo Guerrero Sr., becoming the Cruiserweight Champion. And 2004, June 17, 2014, June 17, WWE main event. Rusev defeated Santino Morello. Naomi defeated Paige. White family defeated White family defeated Sheamus and the Usos. And let's see what else? Sports. Sports game. Yesterday, June the seventh, uh, June seventeenth, game five. Knicks defeat the Houston Rockets 91 to 84. Ninety one to eighty four game game five the uh, nineteen four NBA finals. That was yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday.
Okay, I'm back. Um, I think I got pretty much everything covered, didn't I? Uh, to, by, uh, everything else by, uh, I think I, I think I got everything covered. I think I got everything covered. That's all I do um, for all of you tonight. I'm uh, and um, subscribing to Godfather Soul just for swimming. And to this minute, I'm gonna close out with a little something for all of you today. I'm gonna close out the show with uh, see, I'm going to close out the show with this song from the movie Footloose called Heaven Helps the Man. It's called I'm Free of Heaven Helps the Man by Kenny Loggins in the movie Footloose. Starring Kevin Bacon, 1984, number one hit single. So here it is, close out the show. Subscribe to Godfather Soldiers of Fleming. Hope all of you have a good midnight. I'm out of here. Peace. I hope all of you have a good midnight. Bye your peace. Good night. Your eyes, I know I'm right. Cause Wait, hold on a second. Um, hold on a second. Uh, let me fix this again. Uh, start, start over. Um, on one second. Okay, here we go.
I'm hanging on. I'm free. Helping up the man. His fear. My heart. I'm free. I'm free. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. No, that song "I'm Free, Heaven Up Some Ends." That song is about um people who who are, are, are released from prison. Um, um, after spending like like years in jail. That song, "I'm Free, Heaven Up Some Ends" by Kevin McKenna Lawrence from the book of Number One, Since 1984. So have a have a good night. I'm out of here. Peace.